Hi and welcome to this on shape tutorial. Today we're going to look at the loft feature and we'll look at this second activity in the bottom right hand corner. So today we're going to look at how to create a loft using multiple sketches. So not just using two sketches as we did in the first tutorial, we're now going to add okay, more than two sketches and a loft between those. As in the previous tutorials, on the bottom we've got a number of tabs. We've got a tab here which allows you to access other tutorials and resources. If you click on this tab here, we've got the overview so you could click on the, the links to the YouTube tutorials. We've also got a drawing okay, for this challenge and we have a model which we can also reference as well. So we can spin this around and have a look to get a better understanding of what we're trying to create. So what we've got here is a loft and we've started with a rectangle shape okay, at the front. We then progress to sort of an ellipse or an oval shape and then at the back we've got a circle. So that's what we're going to have a go at creating. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the plus and click on create part studio. After a few seconds, so on the bottom here, you'll see the studio appears. We're just going to rename this, okay, tutorial. So it's easy to know which tab is which. And I'm going to drag it across here. So any of those can be dragged, okay, along. And what we're going to do, if we look at the drawing, we're going to start off with, let's zoom in, we're going to start off with uh, this rectangle here. So it's 150 by 80. So we're going to click on sketch and we're going to draw this on the front work plane. So we're going to select that, press N for normalize to flatten that. And I'm going to go for a center point rectangle. I'm going to click and drag this out. And then we're going to type in, okay, our sizes. And again, if you get these sizes wrong, for example, and you look at your drawing, and if it actually it's meant to be 80, okay, remember, you can always just double click on those dimensions and you can update those by pressing enter. So that's the first one done. What we're gonna do is name that. So you can name it once you've uh, clicked on the tick, but you could also name it up here as well. So we're gonna type in there, okay, front uh, profile. So that's easy to identify later. And you see it updates here. And if we have a quick look what we've got, all right, we've got that sketch at the, at the start now. So we're gonna look at the drawing again. And what we've got, okay, is in total, this is 200 millimeters. And halfway, all right, so 100 millimeters up, we've got this, okay, oval or lip shape. So we need to create an offset work plane from the front. So I'm going to select the front work plane and I'm going to go plane here or it might be okay down here if you've used other tools. Once that appears, we could drag this arrow. I'm going to create this behind okay this initial front work plane. I'm going to go 100 and click the tick. Alright so we've got this second work plane. Again you can rename this. So I'm going to rename that so a middle plane, and you can see it updates on there as well. So that's easy to um, spot. So now what we're gonna do is click on that, click a sketch. I'm gonna go N for normal. And you can turn this initial sketch off if you want, or you can leave it on, it doesn't matter. And what we're gonna do is gonna go into ellipse and click on the origin. And we're gonna drag this out. You see when I move my mouse button, Okay, you get a series of dotted lines because it's referencing the origin and it's also coming up with the, the symbol um, to create a horizontal dimension. So we're gonna click that one and we're gonna click again. It then comes up with the sizes and we can type in the sizes. So I know 100 by 200. However, I do need to check my drawing because you probably got it wrong. So there you go, I've got it wrong. So I need to make sure it's 100 by 50. So again, anything that you draw can be redimensioned. So 50 by 100, there we go. And if I come up to this angle here, I can give that again a name, so I'm gonna go middle profile. 
Okay, and I'm going to save that sketch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn that front profile on and then we can see what we've got. So we've got two sketches. So the next one I need to create and it doesn't matter which work plane I select as long as I select the correct dimensions. And I'm going to click on this one here. The work plane that's going to go at the back of this, if I drag that backwards, is again going to be 100 millimeters. And, and save that one there. So basically from that front one, that is 200 millimeters. If you select the front one, just set it to 200. If you select the middle one, set it to 100. And again, I can rename this. So I can go back plane, like so. And what we're going to do is click sketch on that back plane, click end for normalize, and we're going to drag out a circle. So see for circle, select at the top, I'm going to click on the center, click and then dimension that to 100. And I'm just going to check my drawing. Okay, so if we have a look at the drawing, it says 80. So again, my memory. So if you've got a poor memory like me, it's always good to have a drawing to reference. So there you go, update that. So it's quite easy if you make a mistake. And we've got 80. And again, we can rename this. I'm gonna go back profile and save that. So what I've got now is we've set up a series of sketches and we're going to loft between these. I could keep on going and creating extra planes, extra shapes, and create a very complex design. And you can have a go at that if you wish. But we're going to stick to this uh, design here for now. So we've got a rectangle, we've got an ellipse or an oval sort of shape, and we've got a circle. And we're going to blend those together in 3D. So again, any of these could be edited. So if you right click on them and go edit, you could go into the sketch. Okay, you can come to your drawing and check the dimensions, go back to your file and update the dimensions if you need to. All right, so if you've got a poor memory like me, that's a good technique to use. So what we're gonna do now is go up to Loft and we're gonna create a solid and we're gonna go for new because we've got no other parts within this design at the moment. So we're gonna click new. And again, like I've talked about before, if you add other parts within here, you could add this loft to it and you can use the loft to also remove an intersect. But what we want to do is new. So profiles, I'm going to select them in order. So it's important to select them in order. You can reorder them in here as well. And you can go back to middle to front or front, middle, back. Okay, it's up to you. So I'm going to go front. I'm going to go middle and you can see there you will appear here. So it's blending that into there now, and I'm going to go on the last one as well. So you can see here we've got these, and if you click on reorder, you can reorder those. Now, depending on uh, the shape you're trying to create, if you reorder those, it may come up with an error because it will not be able to blend between shapes. So for example, if you selected, I don't know, you say you had 10 sketches, and you selected the first one and then you selected, say, number eight, and then you came back to number two and mixed all the order up okay it would come up with an error and it'd be in red and it will say that it's got an error and again you've got options in here so if we go to top view and I zoom in like so I'm going to keep it not non and non so basically it's going the shortest okay distance and curve between these so that's the shape I want but you could go in here and you've got again you've got some options you could go normal you see it slightly changes that's a normal all right starting profile this sketch here and again you can change this magnitude value and you can see that sort of distorts the shape depending on what you want and again you can go for the end profile which is this one up here and again you can change the value in there so it all depends on how you want those shapes to blend together. So it might be just from an aesthetics point of view that you want to change the shape or it might be a functional, it depends. So these ones here, okay, we're gonna go through later. So all I'm gonna do is click none and click none. So that's gonna just blend the shortest distance. And then let's have a look what we've got. So 
That's OK 101, and I can click the tick. Again, you can rename the loft if you want to, and you can right click on it, and you can edit that as well if you've made a mistake, or you want to change any of these okay, options. So what I'm going to do now, have a look at the reference model. <clears throat> And we're going to check a couple of things. So first of all, I did shell this out and I click edit. So it's a five millimeter shell on the inside and I removed that face there. Okay, you'll see I didn't remove the back. So five millimeters, hopefully I can remember that. And if we go into here as well and have a look at the material, I have signed it to ABS. So we'll do the same in tutorial. So spin this around here. You can hide these as well by clicking them individually and you can, let's have a look, here we go, uh, middle plane there. And you can even turn your origin off if you really wanted to as well. What we're going to do is click shell, click on here, type in a dimension and click tick. So again, if you come to your drawing and you check your drawing and you look and you think, Oh, I've made a mistake. Uh, the shell is meant to be five. Okay, you can go back and edit that by right clicking on it and editing it. And it's important to get these dimensions and options okay, the same because what we can do now, if we go into this part here and right click, we're going to assign this a material of ABS and confirm that. We're going to go to mass and I'm going to check the mass of this. So this is 0 0.306, 0 0.306. And if we go to the one I created, okay, it's 0 0.306. So there you go. So the mass is correct. So I've used the correct dimensions and I've used the correct, okay, options. If that is incorrect, what you'd have to do in your model that you've just created is go through and check a number of different things so you have to check all your sketches the dimensions you'd have to check your offset planes so that they are dimensioned okay correctly and also in your loft if you remember okay if you click edit if you've messed around with these options here and not set them to none okay that does affect the shape and therefore will affect the mass as well so that's you do need to bear that in mind as well when you are changing those options. Thanks for watching, and if you found this content helpful, please click like and subscribe, and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description. I'll see you on the next one.